Okay, so I want to talk about something that um, I've been trying to bring it to the intellectual community in all different kinds of formats, and um, no one's really wanted to hear me out. Uh, no one's ever really given me a chance to speak. I've been trying to um, to write out what I wanted to say, and. Um, also that hasn't happened so there's two ways you can be accepted in the world you or any authoritative person or anything um, and that is from the top down which means you go to whoever's on the top whoever's the accepted accepted expert of the time and they accept you then there's the bottom up where the people decide that you and your ideas and your your theories are valid and then that's really what matters because it's the next generation that views you and how they view you and I really didn't want to um, involve myself uh, I wanted to keep stay anonymous but uh, that also I guess is not going to happen um, So about the topic itself, the uh, I guess the purpose of the brain today, or in any organism, is to, there's lots of purposes, but one of them is to create a simulation of the world. And throughout your entire lives, basically that's what you do. You create a simulation of the world so that you can better predict the future. Now, this is something that science does as a community. They try to simulate the world and predict future outcomes. Engineers, um, flying to the moon, satellites, all of, all of uh, everything. Writing a book. Everyone tries to envision, they have a simulation of the world, and they try to perfect their simulation and use that simulation in order to predict the future future outcomes. Now, whether it be to catch a ball, or to run away from a predator, or to hunt prey, um, you know when to gather food, from where, where's water, all of these kinds of things, it's in your brain, the water source is there, the whole simulation of the world is there. And that's really what the brain is there for. <coughs> so, um, any new theories, any new ideas, all fit into that concept, trying to simulate the world in a better way. So I came up with, a long time ago, 10 years, and I've been trying to pass on um, certain aspects, but every person has a simulation, and I, I obviously also have a simulation in my mind, so do many other people. I'm not saying my simulation is correct, but I am saying that it should be heard. And I need a forum in order to say to describe my simulation the way I see the world. So um, I divided it into seven disciplines, the my simulation, seven dis different disciplines. And I want to talk about the second one right now. The second discipline, I think it's a good one to open with. And it's something that um, really I gathered from noticing people. And um, later on, I noticed that there's a lot of what I was thinking of in tradition. And I sort of, I sort of want to stay analytical and not uh, not go into that side of things but that is also a, it's also strongly supported by tradition and I might say certain things about that but I want to stay on the analytical side so with that said the discussion for today is how, how will I start it um, let's start from the traditional angle tradition calls it evil um, 
Ivong tradition is uh, all tradition. I'm not just speaking about any specific. It's um, it's been theorized many generations. It's something that's always been in the world. People always want to get to the source of evil, figure out what is evil, where it comes from. And it's something that is part of my simulation. It should be part of everyone's simulation, really. Um, so, traditionally, evil has a few different definitions. One of them is imperfection, which I don't want to stay there because, you know, then you can get into like lots of things that are evil that like any imperfection is being evil like a scratch in my car is evil which is not the case um, um, perfection means in a different way but I don't want to get into that I also don't want to get into the realm of evil and all that kind of stuff I want to stay away from that sort of field I want to really speak about when I speak about evil I say what people do that uh, all kinds of things hinders processes um, hinders uh, progress um, div division anything that that has negative effect um, pretty much and why do people do it where does that influence come from why is there this evil influence within us and in tradition this is called the uh, evil inclination um, and it, it's it's known to be uh, part of the body uh, the animal soul so to speak and I want to speak about this animal soul so the animal soul I came to the uh, way before I discovered anything in tradition I was far from it I came to it through an analytical process so let me just take you through that now first of all for evil to be in all of us means there's some necessity for it. There's some reason why it's there. Evil isn't just in you for no reason. It has to serve some purpose, evolutionary purpose. Um, so we can take it to survival, okay? Now, for a lion to eat something that's alive and kill it, that's not evil. That's just a lion, right? For a... I don't know, you can think of a hundred other examples. Um, territorial battles, all this kind of stuff. This is all things that happen in nature that are not evil, because it's nature. They don't have the ability to go beyond their nature. They are nature. We, on the other hand, have this animal part in us that wants to do all these things, hunt, compete, all this kind of stuff and it comes from our animal nature and that is what influences us to evil so if you take survival for any species you need three basic things to survive the first one is procreation because we're all gonna die we're not gonna live forever and you need to be able to pass on your uh, your genes and for your species to survive you need to have procreation then you need to be able to live long enough to procreate and procreation also involves children being able to raise them so that they can procreate um, um, but the living long enough uh, it's more related to the basic survival the living the the uh, the, dis the uh, yeah the fear um, of predators um, all that kind of stuff then there's the nutrition. Uh, for us to live, we need nutrition. And those are the three main things. Um, now, nutrition, I'm speaking in general, it's energy, uh, conserving energy, finding a place to sleep, all this kind of stuff is part of this nutrition process. Um, so, in human culture and in human behavior, nutrition let's put it this way selfishness um, monetary selfishness can be linked to nutrition it can also be linked to procreation um, 
you know, if you throw bread down to pigeons, you can see how in nature they're selfish and they're, they run and they try to steal it from each other. Um, this is something that's in us. And it's something that uh, we don't have to grasp to. We can give food to other people. Um, we can invite them to our house and feed them, right? We don't have to be selfish with nutrition. Uh, and that's, that's evil when we let that animal side of us control us and say, hey, let's be selfish. I'm going to eat all this food and I'm not going to give any of it. So, now, what I really speak about was the procreation aspect. Because that is really a huge part of what's plaguing our society today. Um, Procreation, it's not just... First of all, everyone needs a desire to procreate. It's in us. For procreation to occur, we have to have the desire. We all have it in some way or other. It might be redirected. It might be misdirected, depending on who you ask. But that drive to procreate is there. And with that drive comes certain social uh, aspects. The... Uh, presence of an alpha male in nature it's the male that passes on his seed and for there to be an alpha male that means all males healthy males that want to procreate have to strive to to attain that alpha position there's many ways you can attain an alpha position in nature but mostly it involves some type of alpha battle it could involve splitting off and starting your own uh, own civilization, but mostly it's the alpha battle. And that desire is in all animals, to be the alpha. And the alpha battle doesn't happen between betas. It happens between someone who is not an alpha and someone who is an alpha, or two people who are competing to be alpha. Um, so you'll see lots of people who, who are in a position of alpha. That's who's going to be attacked first. That's the one who's going to be in all the battles and have to defend it. Um, defend his alpha status. Um, so these alpha battles... Um, first of all, alpha vision in human society is all kinds of things. Um, some view it as money, whoever has the most money. Uh, and it's not an unhealthy thing to, 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 to have a, an ambition. Um, ambition stems from this desire to be alpha. And you don't want to just be useless in the world. You want to use this ambition in some way. But you don't want to use it to battle and to bring down other people. Because in our society, procreation doesn't only happen with one alpha. You find one person and you're with them. And that's it. You don't have to battle everyone and have every woman in the world. You just need one woman. And um, but uh, so anyway, this desire to be alpha is in all all males. Um, and also in females to some extent. Um, So when I come with these new theories and ideas um, to someone who's above, someone who's the the uh, expert, the world expert, so he sees himself as alpha and he sees me coming to him with new ideas. And he doesn't want to give me legitimacy because he doesn't want his alpha position to be threatened or attacked. And that's not my point. That's not what I want to do. I want to establish my ideas, my world views, my, and contribute in whatever way, bring truth to the simulation that ev everyone has. So, whenever two males have any type of conflict, I'd say 95% of the time, it's like just, I, it's not any number based on statistics, it's just a number I threw out, but most of the time, um, it's because of this alpha battle. It's because uh, in some way one person threatened the alpha status of another and he wants to defend it.
So without offending anyone's alpha status out there, I want to pass on my worldview and have people understand it. So the other thing about this is who chooses the alpha is not always the male. It's mostly the female. Um, whatever female sees as the alpha, the men will compete in that position, in that place, and they're the ones that really form the society. It's the females that have this vision and state their vision clearly, and there will be an instinctual drive to men. So, men can also interpret their alpha uh, vision. Everyone out there, every male out there sitting watching this has an alpha vision. Just reflect on it. What's your alpha vision? And is it, is it a good alpha vision? And will it bring evil into the world? Because that's where the root of it is. That's one of, not where it is, but one of its roots are. One of its roots are. Um, of course, there's territorial battles, there's all of these things. So I want to speak about the source of this alpha instinct. And the source of the alpha instinct is the source of male and female. Now, the source, if you want to trace it back, it comes at a time where we became male and female, which means we have to look at the flatworm. And the flatworm had, the worm in general has three types of reproduction, right? There is the mitosis, where it just divides and splits and becomes two worms, right? Then there's the hermaphroditic worm. And most worms that you see, earthworms, they're hermaphroditic. And, you know, two worms meet and they have kids. But then there are worms with male and female organs, separately, male and one female. So here's the point where the sexes really split, where they split in the evolutionary scale. Um, and I want to speak about how that happened. Now, this is just a theory, but it's a valid one, and, you know, it deserves to be heard. So here's where it goes. There is a roundworm, sorry, a flatworm today that does this. When two flatworms meet, they battle, they fight, and the loser gets pregnant. Sounds sexist, but this is nature. This is, you know, you can't come preconceived with preconceived notions to nature. Nature is nature. You've got to observe it and take what you can from it. You can't say nature should be like this because this is, it's not like that. This is where it is. So, not to be sexist, but this is the source. So you have this battle and the loser is impregnated and has to bear a child. Okay. So what happens is the strongest one of all of these worms will be the one impregnating. Sure, there will, amongst the, the secondary strength worms that will be fighting and they might get pregnant, but most of, mostly all of the worms will have one gene from, from the strongest worm, and then the rest will be weaker genes. And the next generation will all have one gene from the strong worm, and one gene from a mother. And so this one gene will be passed on. This one gene will stay inside the worm population. Now, from this possibility comes out um, another generation of worms. And this next generation will also have a battle. Now, whoever is the strongest will also pass on their gene, one of their two genes, either the strong gene they got from their father or the weaker gene they got from their mother. Now, this is where it becomes interesting because the next generation now has either the strong gene with their father with a weak gene from another worm or the weak gene from their father with a weak gene from another worm. This is the source of the X and the Y chromosome. You have a strong gene from the father that's passed down from his father that's passed down from his father it can combine and then they will do battle and if you have two weak genes you're pretty much screwed you got two weak genes you're not going to become alpha and you're not you're not going to win any of your battles and you're not going to impregnate something so eventually this strong gene 
loses the requirements for a female organ. There's no purpose for it to have a female organ because um, yeah because uh, this and the weak genes, if you get two weak genes, there's no purpose in having a male organ because you're not going to use it. So the survival of the double weak gene just means you have to find a male to, co to, co to conquer you in order to pass on. You're not gonna you're not gonna impregnate something with two weak genes, and with if you have a strong gene, well then you're gonna need a male organ and a female organ to get impregnated. So, this this is the source. So you see this in nature, where the male tries to conquer everything until it gets conquered by himself, and this naturally forces the species to be stronger. Um, physically, in our society, it's mental, mostly, although there are still more primitive people and more instinctual people that think that strength is the the alpha, but in our society, it is definitely mental, it is definitely monetary, it is definitely how you succeed in the world, um, which attracts females. So... I have uh, there's a, there's a lot of things I can say on this. I have a lot written down, um, but I just wanted to bring these general principles that everything comes from evolution, from an evolutionary standpoint. All of this behavior, it's passed down through through evolution. Um, if we didn't have this behavior, we wouldn't survive. It's required for survival. We get to a point where we no longer require this for survival because we can attain these things logically and through other means, but they're still there, and they still influence us. And you can use this influence either for good or for evil. But the general tendency, if you let it control you, it will be more evil, because it's more selfish, it's more survivalistic, and less, uh, less contributing. But for example, if you use it to help you push you, like. If you're lazy, use that alpha instinct. You, you probably lost alpha battles, and that's why you're lazy. Or you don't need to fight alpha battles, that's why you're lazy. So you can do a switch in your mind and use it to push you to, to, uh, to for ambition. Um, laziness is also some stems from nutrition, right? You don't want to waste too much energy if you don't have to. But. Uh, it's all from survival. If if we, if we didn't have fear, we would die. If you didn't fear a lion or a cliff, you would die. So only the ones who did fear will live and pass on this instinct. Only the ones who have a healthy alpha male instinct will pass on their genes. Only the ones that actually want to fight will pass on their genes. Because the ones that don't won't pass on their genes. So that's why it's in us. And all of psychology really can be explained by these instincts by 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 what goes on in us and and we're above it we, we do not have to listen to our instincts we can go against them that is the advantage of of having a brain so i hope this was informative and um feel free to leave comments um I don't want to hear comments that say, why do you look like that? You look silly or stuff like that. That's just, you know, pointless. Um, I'm going to have other videos maybe on this subject or maybe in other chapters in my worldview. Um, so stick around for those. Um, also, if you want to speak about politics and stuff, just don't do it here. You can do it everywhere else. It's everywhere. I mean, every video you see, some guy comes and says his political views and something just... You know, speak about the topic, about what, what you have, what can you add to it, um, from your own experience, how have you seen it, um, if you disagree with it, why, um, you know, those are contributing comments. Uh, so, yeah, stick around.